warm welcome the audience to New Generation Women, and I'm Janine Fanzenos. In case you heard my last talk show with Lisa Schumacher, I'm still sitting in my in-law's garage with my little office and production studio. It's quite intimate and cozy, actually. Lots of rain right now. And not only do I enjoy the peace of the countryside, but also the beauty of simplicity. And I promise I will find either a charming studio, an art gallery, or a cool webcam background for my productions. So I'm working on this. For now, let me introduce my special guest via audio today, who came into my life in the most inconvenient time ever, I thought. I was actually given a chance to do an energy leadership assessment with him. But at that time, my mind was all over the place. I was had way too much to digest. And I thought, oh, please, not more information to digest. But I already had said yes a couple of months ago. And my business partner became more and more irritated that I kept postponing, pushing my leadership coaching session away. Finally, the moment of truth. I couldn't postpone it anymore. And I kept saying to myself, Mm, just do it. Get over with it as quickly as possible, Janine. Yet everything in me was totally reluctant, which I could not hide and expressed clearly at the beginning of our session. And I definitely thought, oh gosh, what a poor guy. Um, but the end of the story, this was one of the best, best leadership coaching sessions I experienced for a very long time. I'm not just saying that I really mean it. And one part in me knew it. It will be so good, Janine. And I know he also knew it. So as I'm so passionate about sharing the good stuff with you guys, he is a very, very powerful tool. I highly recommend to every leader who starts to wake up, to every human being, actually, who wants to lead his or her life independently. And here he is, our very handsome guest. I'm sorry, I cannot see him. I know. Um, he is an advocate for emotional freedom and mental liberation, and he really knows his craft. He's not just a word processor. He has a profound wisdom, and he walks his talks. talk. So what a treat. Let's go to Los Angeles, California, to Joseph Sagi and talk about the energy leadership assessment that I found incredibly inspiring. Hello and warm welcome, Joseph. Hi. Hello, Janine. And I'm just <laughs> listening to your voice now, and I can imagine how enthralled and captivated all your audience is. You have such a calming and engaging tone. Yes, but you too. I, had to, I talked with Lisa a couple of days ago, and she also has this really huge voice, and you have this huge voice too. And the picture the audience can see, you have also huge wings. But before <laughs> we talk about the wings, um, most people, I guess, they never heard about the energy leadership assessment. What is it? You're right, because when most people think about assessments, I think what jumps into most people's minds is like a Myers-Briggs, you know, when you find out your personality type. And most assessments, what they do measure are your personalities, your strengths, your areas of improvement. And the energetic leadership index assessment is quite different because what happens with a personality assessment, it tells you this is who you are. Mm -hmm. It's probably not going to change, but let's give you some information so that you have this, so you know what you're working with, so you can make the best out of it. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I hated this always. Yes. <laughs> Right. And it's like, yes. it's good. Self-awareness is important. Yes. But the energy leadership index assessment is completely different. It does not measure personality. It measures your perceptions, your attitudes, and in a sense, your level of consciousness as a snapshot in time. So it shows you how you're showing up at the moment, but does not tell you this is who you are. It's just who you are being at the moment. And what it does, it gives you an opportunity to change that and to switch that by being aware of what are the patterns and the loops that are showing up today so that you can choose differently for the future. We, we say at IPEC that every moment tells you who you are and gives you the opportunity to choose who you want to be. And this assessment helps with that. Oh, wow. I love what you're saying. It's a snapshot in, the in this time, in the now. So you have potential. And in that potential, you can always choose. Did I understand that right? You can always choose how to use this potential or how to use it right now. Maybe you have something like a concrete example that you can make it more, you know, more rely uh, relatable to us. Absolutely. It is also about your potential and it's also about whatever roadblocks you have in the moment. So we all have things that we want to achieve in our lives. And for whatever reason, we haven't gotten all the things that we want. And sometimes there are 
external blockages that are really stopping us from getting something in the moment. But I think anyone in personal development would agree that the majority of the time, the reason we don't have what we want is because of something internal. And when I say something internal, I'm talking about a belief that we have about ourselves, about others, or about the world that limits us and prevents us from getting what we want. So we may want to start a business, but if we are fearful of failure or of success or of what people will think, we're not going to get it. And so what this assessment shows us is how we're showing up in terms of our belief systems and our perceptions and our attitudes. So most people think that all you need to do is change your actions. Oh, it's so simple. Just behave differently. You'll get different results. And that is true. But you will not change your actions if you don't change your perception, because our actions are just reactions to our emotional state. And the emotions, they are birthed from our thoughts, and our thoughts come from the belief of who we think we are. So the idea is to get to the root of who you believe you are, to change that belief in a way that empowers you so that it births new thoughts, new emotions, and new actions in a sustainable way. Mm-hmm. You can always, just, yeah. Sorry, yeah, go ahead. you go ahead. No. Um, well, what there is, what you beautifully said, and there is also a trigger experience. Um, a way too long was just holding on to the manifestation wave. You know, everybody is manifesting, and particularly when I lived in California, I, I raised there spiritually. So California or America is very much about you know get what you want and dream for your dreams, and it's mm-hmm. all possible. Which was great when you come from Germany because it's so different. So I really love that bit. But then of course you keep hunting to your dreams and when they come forth it's great but when some things don't go um guilt and shame would come up and i would just try harder and harder and work harder on manifestation and i thought afterwards you took so much time instead of looking at the blockages i'd look at looking deeper within and looking at the shadows which i still see so much and you're working also for corporates i know Um, which I see so much in people happening and corporations working with assessments, but then they don't go through their shadows. So I think also in this time where we are in the pandemic, we are transforming. And I see so so many people are working on the symptoms and surface, but not looking at the cause. So what you're saying is you, you do, you do want to get, to get something, you know, we want to get whole and healthy and peaceful as a population, as the world. And we have a lot of stuff to face right now. Um, So what you're saying is we are facing individually and as a society, as a nation, and then as a world, um, our blockages to look at them. What is actually, what are we actually believing? Is that true? That's exactly it. It's what do you believe? And uh, and notice, it, I love what you said, it's what you believe. It's not what's true or what's not true because the tr- because it, it's irrelevant whether it's true or not. We believe things that are not true and they may limit us or we may believe things that are not true and they might empower us. Mm-hmm. So whether something is true or not isn't as relevant as whether it works for us or whether it works against us. Do you have, how does the energy assessment or leadership assessment help? I know I, what really struck me and struck a chord was um, you gave me that spin of knowing that I really have a strong intuition. Um, we, we, I saw, you know, my leadership assessment. I definitely saw also the conflict within me. It's nothing new that you told me, but it's like this, aha, aha, aha. And then from knowing you own it from just mentally, it's a concept and yeah, I got it and reading it and then really owning it. That was what you did for me when we had the coaching together. And I could see this also with the levels and you might also want to talk about them with the levels of of energy, I think you say. And I could see that one part was um, the the doubting part, the how I deal with stress and conflict. And that was pretty big. And I could feel that before. And then the other part was this strong intuition and this strong knowingness um, that comes so easy to me. And that sometimes I think it's so obvious. Don't you guys see that? Um, and you made this so clear and gave me that kind of permission. You really know that. You, you can really trust that. Not that I didn't do it before, but it was like a, a strong spin for my development. So how do you, that was what it did for me. How do you apply the energy assessment to what you just said? Yeah. So... First of all, the energy leadership index assessment 
is based off of this concept. It, first of all, it was created by a gentleman. His name is Bruce Schneider. He's the founder of IPEC, the coaching program mm -hmm. uh, that created this. And it actually came to him sort of in a vision uh, this con this this chart, if you remember the circle chart in your results, the energetic self perception chart. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He saw that innovation, and based off of that, he developed the coaching program, and he developed the assessment, and everything else that comes out of it. And basically, what he saw in that, and that's illustrated in that chart, is there are two basic types of energy: catabolic energy and anabolic energy. But then they get broken down into seven different levels of energy. And the, on each of these seven different levels of energy, there is a core thought, a core feeling, and a core action that result from, from that level of energy or that level of consciousness in a way. You can think of the levels of energy as seven different levels of consciousness. And the key is that as you move up through the levels of consciousness, you're able to see more, more is available to you and when you have more options available to you you're able to make more conscious choices mm -hmm. sorry did, did i hear you for a moment no no um you're you're luckily you're back i said we have really bad weather right now but the internet seems to be stable and so okay, let's great. just pray and just go through that <laughs> um sorry keep going <laughs> sure and so when we look at the energy levels, you can think there's, so basically there's catabolic energy and anabolic energy. Mm -hmm. Catabolic energy, we all have it. We all have it. And neither one is good or bad, but the catabolic energy is like when you get a big burst of energy and then you crash afterwards. And then anabolic energy, it's not as quick or as immediate, but it's long-term sustainable. And both of them can be valuable in different situations, but catabolic energy tends to show up when we're under stress. And it's one thing, if the stress is life-threatening, then catabolic energy is very important because you want to have an adrenaline rush when your life is threatened because that's what's going to save you and keep you alive. But when the stress is, you get a text from your partner and they say, I need to talk, or your boss calls you into the office and you don't even know what the results are, but you go into stress and you go into catabolic energy, you go, you, you're, 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 you get blinded in a way to the options. And all you see is fight, flight, freeze, fun, the four F's of what happens when we go under stress. And then you don't have all the other options that are available. And so the key with self-awareness is when I become more aware I know how to mitigate stress and tap into anabolic energy more often. And then you can connect to more. And, and just like everybody else in your chart, you have a lot of anabolic energy for you a lot around your intuition. And then you also have catabolic energy. Everyone has both. And it's completely normal because we're conditioned to react to stress. But the less that we react and the more we learn to respond, the more able we are to create the life that we want to choose. Yeah, I, I so get it. And, you know, um, it's not that I heard this the first time. You, you, you repeat it in, in, in cycles and circles and layers and you undo the layers. Mm -hmm. um, and what you say, and I so much, I always look for the good stuff, for the real stuff. This is why I wanted to um, invite you for a talk show because I found it so real how you also presented it. And some people, um, they present it and I can feel yeah, then they have learned it, but there is not a deeper knowing in it. And what I felt was you, there is a deeper knowing, um, which I like so much and which I highlight in this in this whole time where we where we just seem to commercialize easily. And I know you would say it's a judgment, but we easily <laughs> yeah, we easily sell products and we, we commercialize them. And I find it sometimes dangerous. And another wonderful, wonderful man, and he's going to be one of my talk show guests in October is Dr. Gabe Mate. When we talk mm -hmm. about the energy that yeah, no, you know him, he's um, talk about that stress. He's a psychotraumatologist and he's done wonderful work. His documentary or the, the documentary that's done on his work um it's wisdom of trauma by an italian couple they have been the directors it's beautifully done first mm -hmm. of all you so much understand how trauma is happening second of all i think we use this um, pandemic for all of us to look at our generation where are repeating cross-generational the same wounds the same hurts all over again 
we just have a different form now. So for this, I find trauma very interesting. And also for the people who have pains, addicts and, and everything and stress reactions. And I could understand from your work also from studying psychotraumatology um, and from my coaching background, uh, this is how the layers come together. This is how people react. And this is also why I react this way. I could so relate it without judging anybody or my parents or myself. A lot of guilt and shame of why I wasn't able to manage other things or why I wasn't cooler in something or chilled enough. That totally made sense to me. And I could so relax into that. And he has a wonderful method he applies, which is the compassion self-inquiry and the way how he also carries himself um, differently than you, but also very integer, is with lots of compassion and rawness and honesty about his own journey. So mm -hmm. when we talk, when I'm, you know, I'm highlighting you because I know that you have a journey. And um, I think the ones who have a journey, they're kind of humbled to the process and the journey of life. How did your life start for that you have that journey inside of you and be able to transport it in such an integrity or in take away? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, as early as I could, as I can remember, and also what's been told to me from my parents and the teachers in my life, was a very inquisitive child. I always had a lot of questions. Uh, I was always fascinated by how the world works, how our mind works, why things are the way they are. And it made me a little bit strange as a child, uh, but I, it also made me connect more to adults rather than to other children. And even my own mother, um, you know, she became a mother with me when she was 20. And after she had my sister, she had postpartum depression. And the way that things turned out was I just needed to hold a lot of space for her. And even though I was a young child, I think because I was relatively deep and inquisitive and, and just very present for her, I ended up in a way sort of being her therapist or sort of being like her parent in a lot of ways in terms of holding things emotionally. On one hand, I see how perfectly that set me up to do the work that I do today because I've had that practice from the very beginning. And on the other hand, it robbed me of having an experience of being a child, right? Mm -hmm. And so everything that comes into our life, it's, you know, I can judge it as bad or I can judge it as good, or I can, like you said, just release the judgment of it and, and see it for what it was. And that was just the first step in my life. She also brought me into a spiritual environment, which gave me so much value, but then turned out to be a cult. So I basically grew up in a cult for about 25 years of my life. And what I realized, you know, when you're in that kind of group, on one hand, they're giving you tools that are supposed to help your life. On the other hand, it's very dogmatic and they tell you how you're supposed to live in order to be happy. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of judgment around that. And I think that it can be, we, we're all in a way, you know, I can't just blame them for it. I've got to take responsibility because for myself, like for a lot of us, we search for answers externally. We're looking for someone who tells us, what do I need to do to be happy? What do I need to do to have a joyful life? What do I need to do to stop suffering? These are the questions that we ask. And we're hoping that somebody else is going to give it to us. And you know what? When you're in tremendous suffering, you're okay with someone else telling you. Mm -hmm. But eventually, what they tell you stops being the source of, of the healing and starts becoming the source of your new suffering. And it's a suffering because it didn't come from inside of you because it's not your truth. It's something that somebody else told you. And eventually you go on this path from a path where you're faithless to having faith come from something external to eventually finding faith internally and seeing the divine inside of you and seeing that all of the answers to all of your questions have always lied within but to do that, you need to question and question and question yourself. And when you question yourself, it raises your own self-awareness. And then you find that everything that you wanted, everything that you needed was always available inside of you. 
That's a very deep revelation. And, and you are young. May I ask how old you are? I never ask you. <laughs> yeah, I just turned 39. So I'm not even that young anymore. But I just, yeah, yeah to, I just turned 39. To me, that is, that is, that's young, very <laughs> young. <laughs> no, um, and still, I can, I can absolutely feel the journey that you did. Um, when you say your question and you came to answers, was this more a cognitive process or also undoing the layers of emotional pain? Yeah, it, it's, I think that you never find truth as a pure idea or you, or you never quite get to the ultimate sense, but it's a journey. And the journey is, like you said, it's a journey of undoing and unlearning because we're told throughout our life from our parents, from our society, from our teachers, from our friends, from our religion, from our culture, about how we should be. We're told that throughout our whole life. And then we internalize those voices. As children, we just want to do what we want. And then we're told, no, you're not allowed to do that. You must do this. And so we internalize that to ourselves. And then we, and then we just follow that. And we think that that's who we are. And then we wonder why we're not happy. And so the process is the unlearning. It's the chipping away everything that we're not. You know, I like the metaphor that, uh, I'm, I'm paraphrasing this, but Michelangelo was asked how he creates such incredible sculptures. And he mm -hmm. says that he sees the angel in the marble and he chips away everything that is not it. Wow. And that, I didn't I mean, know that. Wow. It's beautiful. Yeah. So it, it's the same with us, except we are both the marble and the sculptor. Yeah. It's our job to chip away everything that we're not. And then all that's left is what you are. So there's no finding yourself. There's just releasing what you're not. Beautiful picture. I never heard that. I, you know, now I totally forgot my question because I'm so in the picture. <laughs> I'm so listening to you that I completely forgot the question. But I, I got back to it. Um, I'm sorry if you hear the fly. I've got a very, um, very cozy fly here. And the fly sits on my microphone all the time. So I hope you're not hearing the fly too much. Um, but I'm at the countryside. Um, Yes, talking when you talked about um, the cult, and I know that I walked away painfully from a lot of groups, a lot of communities, um, people I thought they would have great, you know, great results or great support for me or for getting out of suffering or answers for me, everything that you said, and I would get a lot of pain, physical pain. And I would have to leave often. I would be very depressed because I would disconnect. I would feel again, I'm not belonging. I'm on my own again. So this is how I came into my life. And that's a story that quite um, repeated itself. And of course, um, but there was always this knowing go. It's, it's not for you. And the, the harshness of how things have been, you know, the dogma in that. And also if it went very lovingly or gently, I could always, I could always feel the integrity behind and the glitch behind and yes meaning well i could feel that too but i could feel it would not healthy not be in my path and healthy be for me talking about the current situation and the pandemic and not about the narratives i don't care so much about the narratives but more about um the the learning the the chances we have the becoming independent taking ownership becoming your own leader um what would you as a last question from your journey of seeing how dogma reveals itself, even if people mean well with you, what would you suggest to people in this whole situation of transformation right now to become their own thinkers, which so many people um, say and ask, please, you know, be aware, become aware um, of your own decision making. Don't just follow, mm -hmm. become your own leader. And you have heard this, I'm sure, also of many other spiritual teachers, leaders who um, do wonderful, great work. What would you give as a piece of advice? <laughs> I'm about to get very controversial here, uh, which I don't mind at all. Um, no, go but, for it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, it's exactly what you're hearing right now. And it comes from all sides. And we're becoming more polarized as a society politically in terms of ideology. And you see it in the vaccination versus anti-vaccination argument as well. Um, you'll see people on both sides blame the other sides of, being, of, not, of not being critical thinkers. So people who are pro the vaccination, for instance, will blame the other people of not trusting the science and not looking at 
you know, how things work scientifically and they're just conspiracy theorists. And then you'll see people who are on the anti-vax side say that, well, you're sheeple and you're just following what the government tells you. And why aren't you thinking critically? So both sides blame the opposite side of it. And the truth is that both sides are not being critical thinkers. Mm. When you, when, if you cannot, everything is more nuanced than we believe. Everything isn't as extreme as we believe. There is no one way. You can never be sure that you're right. And that's the, that's the place to begin learning. You need to have a beginner's mindset. Never be sure that you are right. That, that's probably the, be- the best advice that I could give. Because as soon as you become clear that you are right, you have nothing left to learn. Absolutely. We, in the Course of Miracles, we say... Um... I know nothing about of myself. I know I know nothing. And that always puts you, of course, in a more humble state. And yeah. I see it the same way. You have two opposites and two knowers, and they are not ready to be learners anymore. It's like, right. that's why I was always so bored with politics. You have got two sides and they're just accusing each other. I was like, gosh, it's so boring. Nobody is ready to listen, to really to learn and to grow together. So... Um, I like to sink more in the middle and learn. And of course, I do have my triggers. And of course, it's challenging right now to not be triggered, at least um, for myself and for many people I know in my environment. And I do see that it's, a, it's such an opportunity to grow out of generational pains and wounds that we had for so, so many years um, and become our own leaders, which I know um, is, is a long road to take. Thank you so much. Thank you so much to Los Angeles. That was beautiful. And um, I think there are many more interviews to come. I, I definitely will not let you off the hook for this interview. I will definitely come back to you. Thank you so much. Joseph Sagi from Los Angeles. This was New Generation of Women and Janine Fanzinos from a garage in the middle of nowhere in Bavaria. It's a very aggressive flight meanwhile and wherever you are dear audience have a soulful and beautiful rest of your day until we hear each other soon again bye-bye